Hello, Joe. Um, welcome, welcome to the show. Um, I'm glad to have you here. Uh, I think this is just going to be a very casual conversation about, uh, you know, ways to implement smart building projects, uh, especially with focus on connectivity. Um, but why don't you, why don't we just uh, start with the round of introductions? Uh, I'll let you go first, uh, and then I can uh, introduce and we can get into it. Sure. Joe Gasperdoni, I'm the COO of Montgomery Technologies. Montgomery has uh, two divisions. One is what we like to call the old business, which is riser management, management access screening of the sensitive part of a building, the riser. And the uh, new part of the business is intelligent riser, which is a secure network dedicated to building system. A network that sole function is to keep building systems, the systems that run the building, up and running 9.9% of the This is an action or it's this is our 11th year on that front um, and 19th year in riser management. Uh, my background is, uh, I always like to think of it as a bit of a unicorn background. I have, um, this is my 30th year in commercial real estate. About 15 of those were on the operational side in roles as varied as property management, asset management, finance, syndication. And then on the technology side, the other 15 years, was in enterprise software for commercial real estate and now at Montgomery Technologies. So happy to be here and excited to, uh, to delve into this. Thanks, Joe. I've heard you speak uh, in you know, many different uh, uh, webinars and events, and it's always fascinating to listen to your insights. Um, by the way of introduction, I'm Raj Subramanian. I'm uh, the co-founder uh, of Fesilio and also head of uh, products for Fesilio. Um, my background is pretty much IT and software. Uh, before starting Fresnel, uh, I worked for a company for 17 years, focused on telecom uh, products and IoT products. Um, so we here solving for um, portfolio operations and in, in buildings. Uh, Fresnel is essentially a data and application platform uh, for building portfolios, right? So it's an IoT platform. It lets you consolidate data from building systems and sensors and uh, you know have that used in a way uh, to solve a variety of different use cases on the application side um, let's uh, um, you know we're here to talk about uh, smart building projects smart building deployments and uh, I wanted to kind of uh, especially bring attention to but right now you know with covid and uh, back to work strategies. Everybody is thinking about, you know, smart buildings. It's seen a huge uptake, and uh, I've seen a lot of them take uh, uh, a piecemeal approach to that. Uh, right, so they have some use cases in mind. Maybe they want to solve for air quality, or you know, they want to count occupancy to do some uh, to solve for specific use cases, and uh, and they go about doing that. They identify a solution and deploy that. Um, you know, make the integrations happen with their system integrators and, you know, just solve for that use cases, right? The problem with that approach is, you know, as you, uh, you know, go from one use case to the uh, another, you end up with the whole mess of silos of uh, various different applications with different uh, integrations. Um, I have, um, but there is a better way, a more holistic approach to uh, this whole thing, right? And I like to think of it, uh, I, uh, in, um, in, um, in a sort of a, a technology stack, you know, if you kind of separate it, you know, there are different aspects to this, right? Starting with the network layer, and then you have the systems on the network. Uh, these are all the different building systems, uh, starting from HVAC lighting to uh, whatever sensors you want to bring in, and access control, and all of that. And then uh, there is this data that you uh, uh, need from these systems, right, to to uh, enable those use cases. So there is this data layer. And then finally, the applications that deliver those use cases, right? So there is these four distinct layers, uh, network systems, data, and application. So I would like to, uh, um, uh, you know, with this holistic approach, bring attention to that particular uh, um, stack and uh, ask you about, you know, you have a lot of expertise uh, in, in, in the first two uh, uh, network and system side. So I want to pick your brains on uh, those two things and I can, Maybe add uh, uh, 
know, something around data and application and how we solve for that. Does that sound good? Yes, great. That's great. All right. Um, you want to? Right. You, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I think that holistic approach you're talking about is is really cannot be overstated because um, our our history in commercial real estate is to see a problem, solve for the problem. See a problem, solve for the problem. Usually trying to do that as cost effectively as possible. And when you point and shoot in that way, we end up where we are today, which is a bunch of systems and silos that literally go in silos from the network to the data to the application. And now we find ourselves with the need to have these systems communicate roll up to portfolio level and suddenly we're in a we're we're off the mark by by quite a bit so having the this next step is so critical the next few years are so critical to having that vision widen just enough so that what you're putting in to solve for a solution has got a path that you can solve for other solutions as the needs arise. And I think that's really what Facilio and Montgomery, how we approach it is, we are fine solving for the problem today that you need, but you have to be installing a solution that is going to encompass in a holistic way what your future needs are. And that's the harder part for commercial real estate to see and to understand. So yeah, I'm excited to get into that. Great. Okay. Uh, let, let's start with network. And with network, that's probably the most ignored uh, uh, layer of all these four, uh, right, when we're thinking about There's nobody thinking about network sort of thing. So tell us about how uh, critical that is and what you're seeing in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the efficiency. You know, how, if you have to holistically solve for that, how crucial is network and how to go about it? Sure. So first of all, with, with our CRE background, we're very, very comfortable in our understanding that very few buildings can attack and solve for a, the, the master problem all at once. You have budget constraints, you have limitations on in, technically on what you can do and the cost of that. So we're, we, we, ever, we truly understand at the root level that that may not be possible from the beginning. But the network is today, we've, we assess hundreds of buildings a year, and in every single one, you have the equivalent of a plate of spaghetti. It's all tangled together. Things have been cross-connected, connected, flat networks. You have siloed networks. You have most networks in the building don't even aren't even behind a firewall, truthfully. So you've got a very highly non-secure, and um, highly complex uh, situation that you have to start by knowing what you have. And usually it's a version of that. Then you have to get that building, once you know what you have, you have to get that on a path of what we call remediation and commercial real estate we will call remediation usually. And that just means, okay, where are the priorities based on a combination of cost and and security exposure. Um, where are the where are the things we can do today? Often there's a need that's driving it. So maybe it's we're trying to secure our, our BAS systems. So maybe that's the root level. The trick is that, and how we approach this is what we install to solve for the BAS solution, if that's the priority, is the beginning of solving for all the other open systems and all the other flat networks and cross connects. So the, the trick to what we're doing is, is we're solving for the priorities and then putting the building on a path over subsequent budget cycles to attack the things that are lower priority but increase the capability in the building. So that could be very simple. It could be um, maybe there are a few switches that you install and a firewall to solve for the BAS system. You get all that connected and secure. But then you install two or three more switches the next year and you migrate lighting control and you might migrate indoor air quality sensors. 
And pretty soon, what you have is a fully managed solution that once you've solved for that and you know that this these systems are going to be up and running 99.99% .99 of the time and that they're fully secure from there we bit it's facility it's the facilities of the world that tell us okay where do you want the data and where does it go and how do we maintain those secure connections and then we leave the rest of data aggregation and applications to the experts like Cilio to take on from there. But not if you don't solve for the root problem, it's just like building a building. If you don't build the foundation, then you're going to be very limited in terms of what you can do and layer on top because it will be <coughs> brittle. And brittleness in our world just means it's working and then a network over here goes down and then you don't have that data and then you spend time trying to and then just when you get it working again a month later something else goes down so that fi fixing the foundational element which is the network is really step one to enabling all of these new solutions okay so w w what i'm hearing is that you know so there has to be strategy uh, to kind of uh, bring all of the systems onto a single converged IP network of some sort and, you know, make it secure that that's like the foundation on top of which you can build any kind of uh, smart building strategy. Am I getting it right? That's exactly right. And then on your side, I guess the question would be once you've got whatever infrastructure that you need to run Facilio, what are you guys seeing on that side of it um, in terms of where, where do people start? Um, how do you know we I sort of I sort of explain how we start and and how it is a, when you get because I know Facilio is basically uh, you can do data aggregation or you can do applications or you can do both and so where mm -hmm. where is the common start point for Facilio? Yeah, so uh, I described Facilio as uh, data and application platforms, right? So there are there are three keywords there: data, application, and platform. <laughs> So uh, uh, all of this is uh, 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 very important. Um, so um, from from a data perspective, Facilio can help consolidate data across buildings, across the portfolio uh, from multiple different sources, right? It can be your base building systems to whatever IoT sensors, or it could be even your enterprise data, right? So what is your tenant information or employee information or depending on the context of the business, that can be, you know, even weather data or some, some traffic data or something like that. So uh, that's the data aspect of it. How do you kind of consolidate all of that and modernize all of that is the data side of things. Um, and, uh, and then there is application uh, side, right? So and there are various different application use cases. You can, uh, using the data, you can solve for uh, your energy, um, you know, just starting with some basics of uh, needs, right? Just uh, data visibility, uh, benchmarking, and visibility, and you know, you, you seeing tenants are demanding data from building owners these days. So you know, you have to have the data to be able to even uh, share it or use it, and you know, and then you can use data in a lot more. Uh, uh, you can you can go from strength to strength, but once you have the data, right? So once once you have the visibility, you it, you it, 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 you can get informed on the kind of strategies you can adopt to uh, better outcomes. And uh, that can be on the energy side, that can be on the indoor air quality side, whatever it is. And then you can determine what kind of application use cases you want to uh, implement. And even there, Presley uh, uh, has a, a variety of different application uh, application modules that can be deployed uh, to solve for things like uh, analytics, FTD, benchmarking, dashboarding, single pane of glass type uh, uh, command controls, center type applications, or optimization strategies, right? So uh, uh, HVAC optimization, for example. So you can deploy all of those use cases. And then the third uh, mark of that is the uh, platform. Right, so uh, both on the data side and, and on the application side, what we are offering is not just a point solution. Uh, right, it's a it's a platform, and the definition of the platform is that it's, it's actually flexible uh, and customizable for the end user needs. Right, so you, you, you know, on the data side, if if you wanted to kind of create a data lake with, uh, say, for example, a brick schema or real estate core. The solution becomes adaptable uh, in terms of whatever data model standards you want to use, or your own. It could be your own proprietary uh, standards, right? 
but whatever that standard is or whatever that uh, model that you want to adopt uh, adopt the the solution is flexible for that you know that that's the platform aspect and it is extensible you can extend that data model to uh, and data model not just the model is just one aspect of the platform uh, what is the data integration side of things how can you extend that to new the new type of data sources how are you going to share data so how can you extend that with new sort of uh, you know other depending on whatever application you want to integrate you may want a, a customization of those areas right so that's the platform aspect of it and applies both to data and application so now when that based on that do you when do you find that when you um, uh, start with a, an organization, are they coming to you with a specific need to solve first, or are you, um, when you're presenting your suite of tools, are you sort of helping them prioritize based on their needs? Like, what, what is there a common sort of start point that you find out there? Um, so there are uh, different companies are at the different level of. Uh, uh, maturity or have different strategies to this right so um, but we, we there are some really mature organizations that uh, are, that have dedicated teams thinking about this holistic approach and uh, those are the teams that are really uh, uh, defining a data strategy and uh, um, not really taking a piecemeal approach to deploying these use cases, right? So what, uh, when, you know, maybe they did that in the past and they realized, you know, it's, it's not scalable and, uh, and it basically leaves you in sort of a, a, a fix about, you know, all of these different applications you, you know, end up, uh, you, you might actually, multiple applications may have the same system integration needs and you're duplicating system integration effort across these applications and things like that, right? So they, they have the, they, uh, they have at least recognize the need for a holistic data strategy. Um, those are, um, the, there are some companies, um, and those are probably on the uh, mature end of the spectrum, uh, uh, right? Well, but there are others who are just starting to think about, uh, thinking about it from the use case perspective and coming to us with a certain use case in mind. And we, you know, we always encourage them to, uh, you know, think about it more holistically. But the uh, Good thing with, with Festlio is even if you actually use Festlio for a particular uh, use case, it is kind of extensible. You can go from there, and then when you're ready for a data strategy, you can actually you don't have to rip and replace. You can extend that and adopt your existing solution to uh, take on those uh, uh, components, right? So that that that's how uh, uh, we do that. Um, coming to, um, I wanted to kind of ask you about. Um, uh, the networks. Uh, you, you talked about the importance of uh, thinking about it from uh, you know converged network standpoint. Uh, is that uh, practical uh, just for new builds, or uh, you know, do you see that uh, how practical is that for existing portfolios? I, I'm sure there are a lot of challenges in ex existing portfolios, right? Yeah, it's surprising. The challenges actually are 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 similar in scope, but entirely different in scope. Um, from new construction to existing. So uh, today, I think we're at about 90% um, existing construction and going in and essentially starting the process of moving them to a holistic, secure solution. So, um, but it's interesting because the 10% in some ways is, um, is even uh, more sensitive to the needing the start point to be right. And I'll explain that this way. In the new construction world today, every building, I mean, 99.9% .9 of all new construction coming out of the ground today is based on designs from five years earlier. And the companies that are making those designs, when it comes to network design and building systems design, they really, not necessarily their fault, they did not envision what is coming out of the ground now later. They looked at designing a network, maybe for the BAS and maybe another one for the lighting control. But all of a sudden, these new buildings, as they come out of the ground, they have six, eight, 10, 11 IP-based systems. So they, the technology has evolved and nobody contemplated that when the design occurred. So all of a sudden, there's this this sort of uh, you know herd of animals running crisscross 
uh, as these things come out of the ground, like how do we manage this? How, if our future goal is to make this a smart building, supposed to be a smart building as it comes out of the ground, well, we all know now you, you can't really achieve that with siloed networks. So there's sort of a mad scramble to recover from the old design in the moment as the building's coming out of the ground. And we've kind of created in our company, I almost think of it as like the uh, emergency fire crew because it sort of it start, starts to look like that when we get the call and they say, hey, we have this problem. And so we have this very you know, structured approach to going to every vendor, getting the specifications, designing the fiber backbone, designing the network to solve for that, and then coming up with a very complex, when you look at it, but very detailed cable, what we call the network cable, uh, the, the cable network and patch plan. And what that really just is, is a literal, here's where equipment is, here's where it's being connected, here's the port it's being connected to on the switch, so that somebody has a highly documented um, visual of where everything is going to be go is going to go and where it's going to connect. And then on top of that, we actually just have a visual uh, network as built that shows physically where the things are and how they're connected in the schema. And so by delivering that, designing, implementing, and delivering that, we can catch that building before it's fully built out and make sure that the start point is right. And that that's really, um, the, the, it's a lot of work, but it's not in the design you know, of a hundred, hundreds of millions of dollar building, new construction, the cost of this is not, uh, it's a, a rounding error in the scheme of it, yeah. <laughs> um, but critical piece of the future of that building. So we see that, we're working on that about 10% of the time. And then on the 90%, it's really, uh, a different um, approach, usually constrained by budget. It's really defining priorities. You know, if in the in the world of a Facilio Montgomery world, it would be okay. What are you doing with Facilio? How do we start there and make those connections and that data managed and up and running and redundant? Most importantly, now redundant. And redundancy has a definition in our world that's very different from the software world. It's a lot of physical redundancy. How do I have multiple circuits so if one goes down, you don't even notice. It just continues to run. Beyond, behind that, how do we have redundancy of pathway of those circuits? Because very often, somebody's doing work in the street and they cut the AT&T circuit. You do not want the Comcast circuit to be running in parallel with that, or you're going to have both go down. So we do a lot of analysis um, from our from our uh, fiber background. We, we, we know where the fiber runs and rings around the cities. We um, have our contacts in every single ISP over 20 years. And we have to really design for that because our job, when we're backing what we do with the three, three nines percentage or, or the five nine total, uh, it really requires us to take that extra view. Exactly. Once you, uh, uh, you know, made that system integration uh, and brought the data to, to Facilio, now it's, uh, um, that is the data and application separation, right? So that data now can be used either by Facilio's native application module, or it can be shared with third-party applications, uh, right? And it really depends on a lot of uh, building-specific uh, uh, needs here, you know, you want in one building, you might need to deploy certain use cases, which probably is not really that important in other buildings. And, uh, and it, you know, you, 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 and there is also this building, depending on the kind of use cases, there are these building teams and engineers and property managers preference in terms of what they want to use, uh, right? So, but this data aggregation is uh, pretty uh, key if, you know, the data sharing aspect of the data aggregation is really key. Otherwise, the you will actually end up duplicating system integration efforts across these applications that you want to deploy uh, instead of having to do that just once and you know reaping the benefit yeah. of it. That so the the follow on to that is, um, I think what scares a lot of 
our industry because of the past history is the idea of the vendor lock-in, right? Like, um, okay. I'm going to go down this path with one company and then they're going to get me like the old guys and they're just going to hold on and I'm not going to be able to do anything different from what they're doing. And I, so what I think I hear you saying is um, we're, we're, we're aggregating data, we're creating an independent data layer that anybody can access, including if for some reason I don't like Facilio's energy management application down the road, I can swap that out for some other solution and still have this layer sitting there completely open for whatever I want to use. Is that that's essentially what it is? Exactly. So we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, like for example, typically customers start with uh, like a single pane of glass dashboard type of visibility related use cases, right? Uh, type use cases. So once they brought the data in, the immediate value is to actually drive visibility using that data to various stakeholders who never had access to that data. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, traditionally, uh, the approach to that would be to maybe take the data out from the BMS, off your MSI to take the data out from the BMS and give it to your data engineering team that probably used a Power BI or Tableau or something like that to set these things up, right? That was a very disconnected uh, process. Um, but, you know, firstly, you have a solution for that, but it is not necessary, you know, once you brought the data uh, in, uh, you can actually take it out to your Power BI if you already had all of these set up, you know, it's not necessary that you have to use. If you don't have that, well, uh, first you have an uh, application uh, that, that you can maybe make use of. But it is not really necessary that you have to use this theory. Right? That's that's the data and application separation that I was talking about. You have uh, a very similar um, approach, which is why I, I've always appreciated how you're going at it. Uh, we 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 sort of frame it this way. Um, there's nothing about what we do that's proprietary. We use Palo Alto firewalls because they're the industry leader by Forrester Gardner and everybody else. We use Cisco switches. We create an enterprise network. But ultimately, and we and we do the ongoing monitoring and maintenance of that network to keep it up and running. But ultimately, if the building, you the building, or you the company decide, you know what, we're going to go. We found somebody who's do, who's less expensive, or we like better, or whatever. There's nothing preventing you from moving to that other solution for ongoing monitoring and maintenance. We're just hoping that we do it so well. And at the right price point, where you never want to do that, and that, but exactly. but it's really important because I think you see this when you're selling in on your side to your solutions, and we see this to a lesser degree, but but similar. There are other approaches that um, look like the capabilities are the same, but the the fundamentals are based on proprietary technology. And sometimes it's hard in commercial real estate because there, there's all, there, may, there may only be a small number of very technically savvy people involved in the decision making. So a lot of times that point, that really critical piece about where you're step, what you're stepping into is sometimes lost. And I know you probably struggle with this too, but sometimes we all have a hard time because you don't want to really cast shade on the other party but you do want to educate the potential customer that there's a big difference where you're about to go here between proprietary and non-proprietary. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're pretty much doing the same thing in different layers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I think yeah, so. Yeah, so the same concept, yeah. yeah. Um, I know we are, uh, probably run out of time. Um, is there something that you want to um, add as a closing remark, anything that uh, you think we have sure um, well I think the biggest uh, I, I'd like to take a step back because I think this is a really the really important component the important uh, view that our industry isn't entirely aware of and the more this message gets out I think the more um, we'll we'll take a step forward in the right direction today Real estate, because for a variety of explainable reasons, is behind in the world of technology. And when we talk about those three layers, about network infrastructure and what we would call data infrastructure or the independent data layer, and then applications, we, unlike other, other industries, have solved 
quite a long time ago for the network infrastructure side. And they solved a lot of the application and data infrastructure sides. Um, they, they just are further along. And so the challenge for CRE is that we're trying to solve for all three at the same time. And, and so we need to know that and not ignore any one of them because any one of those three that's not solved for is going to limit the success and the future of what we're trying to accomplish in buildings. It's a really critical thing. And so the difficulty of solving for all three at the same time is really an order of magnitude more, more for, for an industry to take on because there are complexities with all of them. So I've always advocated, and I think uh, Facilio, you, I think you got you, Raj, have approached this the same way. We all have to know we cannot solve for it all. It's a, it's, it's an impossible task. So partnering with solution providers, and it's not it's not a one to one relationship. It's a yep. many to one relationship. Finding the people who can do what they do successfully in their layer. And in your case, multiple layers, but but it's the same approach. Finding the people who can successfully uh, execute on those needs, and then bringing that together in a partnership way is really how we're going to solve for this challenge. Um, it's it's just if there's somebody out there who's saying they can do it all, it just isn't true because it's way too. We all know this in our in our different worlds. It's just. There's a lot of complexity and, and, industry and expertise that goes behind that. So I would say be aware of the challenge and then approach your path to solution by understanding that you're going to be stacking new vendors into a stack and making sure that they're open and that they're enterprise level and that they, most importantly, that they can actually execute on what they're selling. Those are the okay. those are kind of the key components for me. Great, great, uh, great closing remark. I, I think uh, mine is pretty much on the same lines. I'm uh, constantly uh, as we talking to a lot of uh, customers and prospects. I see uh, uh, there is always attention on the use case and the business value of the uh, use case, uh, right? But uh, um, I. Mm, mm, I try to kind of uh, uh, bring some attention into this holistic approach uh, from uh, um, um, you know that that is beneficial in a longer term. Not, it's not necessary that you have to do everything today, you know, That's but right. uh, just just to be aware that there are these different layers and different uh, you know uh, uh, stakeholders or different vendors that you have to work with to you know solve for this uh, a larger challenge instead of just uh, looking at one particular use case in one building. Just to you know, be aware that there are these things. There is there is usually a network aspect of it. Maybe there is a role for you know MSIs and system integrators, and then uh, you know the data providers, data infrastructure uh, solutions and applications and things like that. And to be aware of that and to actually make it as part of your strategy and create a roadmap around that becomes really uh, uh, critical. It, it's not necessary you have to uh, solve everything today, but uh, you know you can. You, but it's a journey that you have to, uh, be, you know, be ready to uh, uh, do and have a strategy around it. And uh, that's that's what I actually wanted to talk about uh, today. I hope uh, we've actually managed to convince someone. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm that, sure that we, we, get, we put somebody on a path. They're, they're thinking about it now. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Um, Yep. So thanks, Joe. This is it's always well, great chatting with you, and uh, I hope we get to do. Uh, but this is a big topic, and uh, you know we can. I can keep talking about it. Uh, hopefully, yeah. we'll get to uh, spend more time discussing this in various forums uh, uh, down the line. But great just chatting to you, Joe. Look forward to it. Thanks, Raj.